Welcome to another tutorial in the series by Renderosity on Poser Pro 11 and Poser 11. I'm Mark Bremer and in this movie we'll take a look at the new capabilities that come with Poser Pro 11 and Poser Pro 11 that has to do with ray tracing, subsurface scattering, and how it relates to working with the human form. We've examined subsurface scattering on some hard-edged objects in other movies here at Renderosity. We've looked at ways to do indirect lighting and things like that along with uh, the Poser tool sets. What we are capable of doing now inside of Poser Pro is really cool and creates some great new, I should say, more realistic types of effects. But it comes with a render cost. Now, I've been lurking around some of the forums, and I know there's people going, oh, this new render engine, it takes longer than the other. It's supposed to be faster. Uh, not when you get into the world of ray tracing. This ray tracing technology is not new. The kind that uh, the folks at Smith Micro have engaged has been around for some time. It's very good, but it takes a while to do what it does. So in our scene, I've got the delightful uh, Pauline here, new with Poser 11. And I have no lights in the scene, none whatsoever. I've turned the backgrounds to a white, and they also have a diffuse color to glow. And now that I'm talking about this, I have to point out that this is an advanced tutorial. If you are new to the program or I'm going through something, you're going, how do you do that? Uh, please check out some of the other free movies here at Renderosity and fill in those blanks. The biggest part about working with subsurface scattering and the fact that it takes longer to render is deciding when and where you want to engage some of these features. We've had other series here where we can talk about how you pull out certain components with G buffers and things like that and build an image on the backside. If you want to decide where to do that, well, that's what this is about. I have our basic uh, character here and they're rendering in Firefly right now. We'll let it add the objects to it. And it's nothing remarkable here. There's, since there's no lights in the scene, we're not getting any shadows being cast. We're not uh, getting much of anything. And the program, surprisingly, is taking a while to figure that out. Now we see the eyes uh, pop up, and it's got kind of a nice, uh, well, otherworldly type of look. But obviously, that's not what we want. So let's take a look at the Firefly settings here, just so we have a point of reference. This is cranked all the way up here into the ray tracing category. Now this is where one of the big differences is in the Poser 11 ray tracing and the earlier versions of the Firefly versions of ray tracing. The ray tracing for the earlier versions of Poser will carry color with the individual little light beams that you know shoot around the scene. The difference is with the Poser 11 is that it actually carries the luminescent values as it bounces around the scene. And that's how it figures out how things uh, work below skin or in glasses of milk or something like that. So I do this just so we have a touch point saying that, yeah, ray tracing's been around in Poser, but not the kind that we're using in Superfly. So let me just pop over here to Superfly. These are the basic settings when you open the program and get Superfly going. Let's go ahead and render now and see what happens. It's going to be slightly different. Now again, the scene has no lights in it. It only has the two background elements, the ground and the sphere that goes over the scene. But for each of those, I've created an alternative diffuse light quality that acts as a glow. The objects are actually emitting the light. The scene is picking it up. And this is what the new ray tracing is doing. So it's a fantastic way to add some additional light to the scene. OK, well, great. That's that's really nice. How's it going to affect my renders? Well, let's take a look at how this operates in the context of the materials. Working with this type of subsurface scattering and working with the kind of ray traced bounce light we have going on is not a all or nothing type thing. It integrates very closely with what lights you choose to use, whether you're using image based lighting and other elements in the scene. One of the reasons we saw the eyes in that first render here, let me. Uh, scrub over here, is that I modified the eyes to actually pick up the items in the scene and reflect them. They were a little bit hot because there was no shadowing going on or anything ambient occlusion that's going on with the lights just coming from the scene. So they showed up by themselves. They were reflecting white and that's part of the kind of pathology that comes with the Firefly render engine. I've done several movies where we kind of yeah, mess around a little bit with the subsurface scattering and custom texture maps. What I did was modify the eyes just a little bit 
with uh, just plugging in the, the black and white values that go with the bump channels to give us a little more reflection here. It works great in the Superfly scene, in the Firefly scene. Well, you see what you get right there. So let's go ahead and zoom in a little bit closer to the face so we can actually see uh, a little bit better exactly what's going on right here and how we may want to consider working with these things. I'll do one more render and then I'm going to add a single spotlight to the scene and talk about the types of things and the candidates for subsurface scattering. We don't necessarily want to use subsurface scattering on all types of characters. This will uh, sound horrible, but it's true. With the darker skin, the beautiful dark skin of African, Indian, Caribbean, Hispanic types of uh, dark tones, the subsurface scattering, while you can tell that it's in there if you look, isn't quite as prominent as working with a uh, pasty white uh, Northern European Caucasians like me. So the character I'm working with here is intentionally chosen as Caucasian because these lighter skin values show off more of the subsurface or the light going around underneath the skin as we begin working with it. Don't worry, we're not going to render this whole thing up, but I did want you to see the face just a little bit more and uh, the mouth area as well. These are really kind of low settings for Superfly, so it's looking a little bit grainy, not quite as sharp as you would want on a final rendering. But here's some things to pay attention as we start working with lights in the scene and as we start working with other lighting types because all these considerations play into the fact of whether you want to use subsurface or superfly at all or when or for certain objects in your scene. Okay, we've got some nice shadowing going on around here by the teeth and the finger going into the mouth. Right around the fingers by the eyes here, or the side of the face, get some nice shadowing going in here, neither lacrimal on the eye. Same thing for the ear and some good shadowing that's going on here. Again, this is all based on the indirect illumination from the background elements. There's no light in the scene. So let's do a couple things here. Let's come over to preview. I'll click on the background so that that is selected now. And let's come over to properties and I'll choose we don't want it visible in ray tracing, we don't want it visible in the camera, we don't want it visible at all. And when we do a render right now, since there's no lights, there's no background, nothing of that, you know, nothing of that sort going on, we should see a whole lot of nothing. We're going to get a little bit of a background and it looks like we're getting this tan background color right here. Well, I think we'll fix that because what I'd like to do is push it all the way to black so that we can see exactly how subsurface is showing up on the character. So let me cancel out of this. We'll pop over to materials. Oh, this is nice. Let me come back to pose and see if we get a better material view. There we go. Okay, diffuse color, we want ground. That's fine. Let's go to background. And I'll simply turn this to black so it doesn't show up any longer. We'll come back to our pose right here. Let me drop a new light into the scene, create light, spot. And you know what, this library, uh, we'll leave it open, we'll be using that. The spots come into the scene, I'll move it around so it's shining in the front of our character, but I want to kind of narrow this down. It's a spotlight. Currently when we go through the parameters right here, we can see that. Okay, let me turn on ray tracing shadows and parameters here. I want the angle end instead of being really wide at 70 degrees. I'm going to dial this down to something more like 10. Since the light is still selected, I can come to Object and Point At. I'll choose the head of our character. Click OK. This will redirect that to our character right here and it allows me now, wherever I move this light, it's going to point at the character's head. So we'll get a good sense of what's going on. If we pop in real quick to come over here to render and we choose Firefly instead, when we render this up now, we'll see the, this is a, again kind of a, a higher fidelity version of the uh, Firefly render right now. It's doing its own subsurface scattering, which is okay, but it's not nearly as efficient or as effective as the Superfly subsurface scattering. So we see it uh, working with the hair a little bit here. We see it, you know, picking up the, the character's qualities right there. We get the weird glowing eyes because I added that reflection channel in there. Okay, 
not anything special or worth taking a look at twice. By simply kicking it over to Superfly and rendering this again, we'll see now what the subsurface scattering for Superfly is going to be able to pull off in this scene. It's actually quite phenomenal. And we'll see the way the light bounces around and focuses as we start working with it on the character. Already we can tell that we're getting some light coming through and bouncing off the skin, lower portions of the eyes. We can see it around the nostrils right here, picking up the nice light from the illumination underneath, and especially this focusing light that's going on right above the finger. The light's coming down, hitting the finger, and now, instead of like Firefly carrying the color samples to another object with the ray trace, now we are also carrying the illumination or the lumens that travel with that ray traced beam as well. So we're getting these uh, much more realistic types of interactions as they go on. Let's reposition the spotlight and see what else is going on. You'll notice the eyes aren't reflecting in that kind of weird capacity like they had before. If I come over to preview right here, let's grab our light and bring this over so we get oh, one of these nice dramatic effects going on right here and kick out another render here we'll see that we get all sorts of nice effects that we wouldn't get any other way. And Don't worry, I won't keep going back and forth between Firefly and Superfly. You're starting to see what's going on. The reason I am doing this now is so that as you make decisions about what you want to capture in a render or what you want to push off in a G-buffer render and then use the two capabilities of Poser to create a good image faster. Now you can create fake indirect lighting in Firefly. I've done a ton of that myself. We've got a primary light and instead of letting the things that Superfly are doing, kind of bouncing the light around, you set up a spotlight that doesn't uh, cast shadows and you have it at just a light tone so it kind of uh, illuminates the bottom or underside of the character. Yeah, that's easy to do but it's a little more difficult to get this, this focused light that happens near these areas, the nice areas around the edge of the the nose there, the light actually coming through the nostrils just a little bit and the way it interacts with the eyes. The reflections I have put in now for the eyes are showing up very well right here. We see those actually highlighting in the eyes. It's behaving just the way you would want something like this to behave. Okay, well that is uh, really nice. Now in terms of determining when you want to use Superfly or when you want to fake the lighting, Usually I'll use this because, as I mentioned, I have a function as an art mercenary for years and years, and I'm mostly interested in good quality image as fast as possible. And that means that sometimes I don't use the high-end functions because it simply takes too long. If I'm doing a close-in portrait like this, where you're going to see a lot of detail, we want the uh, eyelashes to be uh, very specifically cast in shadow. And let me check something out. Let's come over here to the light properties. Ray trace shadows, those are on. We can tighten up the shadow samples or the blurring if we want to. And we can also add a little ambient occlusion if we wanted to right here. When I'm working with a close up shot like this, these are where I say, you know what, I can do some post production on this, I can combine some Firefly renders. What's going to be the smartest use of my time? Because, well, time is money, or I'm lazy, one or the other. We'll see that showing up now, where we're getting a little more ambient occlusion, and again, increasing the reality of the light as it interacts in the scene. I can already tell that we're getting nice, darker types of uh, light going on because of the occlusion factoring that's going on, especially around the edge of the nose here. But that's really showing off some of the nice capabilities now of the subsurface scattering. We're getting some nice back underlighting going on. So this is a close-up. Makes perfect sense to do this. However, if I change cameras and we come back to the main camera, we're further away from our character right now. And when I render this up, it's like, well, is it worth the speed hit? Because there's a ton of time spent on the hair objects when we start working with a character like this. For me, the answer right here probably is I'll find a way to uh, fake it with a couple extra lights because we're not in that tight. So these are just uh, business production decisions as you work with it. Yeah, that's okay. 
So let's look at some of the other lights that come with Poser. And we'll come down into the Poser 11 content here. The basic light sets, I'm sure you've played with those. We won't uh, spend time going into that. And let me kind of, will it let me uh, move this around? No. Small screen space here. You hear me complain about that all the time, right? Let's first come up with some of the poser, well, the basic light sets, just so we can see. This will replace all the lights that I have in the scene. Come to poser 11 lights. Let's go with bright lights and see what happens in here. Thinks about it. And we'll render this off. Now, we're adding more lights to the scene. We're in superfly mode. It's going to take longer to render. But we're getting some pretty nice interactions right here. No background going on. This is a case in point where I might say, you know what, if I'm going for this glamorous type of model look, an indoor shot, this is where I would play with the background elements in the scene. I already have the diffuse lighting color in there. If we'll let this, no, we'll cancel that. Eh, it's almost done. Okay, finish. I have to let it finish. We do get some nice interactions on the skin. Now, I'd mentioned about using Superfly and the subsurface scattering for Caucasian skin tones. One of the reasons is, is that the skin is much more transmissive and the light actually does get into it. It's like the difference between milk and coffee. There is some subsurface scattering that goes on with coffee or, or mid-tones like chocolate milk, right? But those differences just aren't as apparent when you're working with it. Now, we can see the eyes reflecting because of the lights in the scene and this is based on the subsurface scattering. This is a big one for me in the new ray traced engine that comes with Superfly. I like real reflections in the eyes instead of the fake reflections that are put into the eyes based on reflection maps in the scene. It's been a method that's been used with Poser for years, it's okay, but for me you can just tell that the eyes aren't reflecting things in the scene and I find it distracting. So that's me uh, I'm whining just a little bit right here. We'll skip these other poser lights here. Let's uh, jump into something a little more meaningful, perhaps. One is HDR, the, the uh, special effects lights here. The nice thing with HDR lights, and uh, we're working with the light probe metaphors here, so if you go out on the web hunting for additional lights, make sure you get the light probe kinds instead of the spherical, just so you know that. The HDRI effects show up or reflect much more strongly than just image-based lighting. The image-based lighting that we have down here, both the ambient occlusion and for color, is just that, predominant, predominantly color, and you will get some reflections going on, but the HDR reflections are significantly brighter. Let me go ahead and bring in uh, Fort Ord. I've got a single bright door in there. This should change out the lights in my scene just a little bit. And we'll see, we'll come back to preview here. And if it doesn't, eh, it doesn't with these. The image-based lighting will, because it uses light probes for the lights instead of the other. So I can go ahead and move this around the scene here. Let's render up, but we should get a nice reflection in the character's eyes with that right now. And if we don't, well, tuh, there it is. So it thinks about it for a second. We get some nice edge light coming in, and we get a little bit of, of creepy show through from the reflections in the scene. Ah, there we go. The light's updated here. So we've got some image lights in the scene right here, and it's allowing some light bleed underneath. This is what's controlled by fine-tuning the lights in the render settings, and also coming down here to the individual lights and going, all right, what's going on with these things? Let's check out these, these specific lights right here. Number one, when we come over to properties, let's see what's turned on. Shadows is not turned on. You know what? It's going to add to the render time, but I think I want shadows turned on. That should cut down on a lot of this strange type of uh, bleeding that's going on. Let's check with the other light control here. Again, um, this is a diffuse image-based light, IBL. Let me go ahead and turn on shadows here because I also want some realistic shadows to come up with that. The program defaults to the fastest render time possible when you start bringing in these settings. You always have the ability to go ahead and say, you know what, we need a little more reality, including, let's bump up the ambient occlusion with that light. Let's go ahead and add a little ambient occlusion with this light. For comparison, let's do a render real fast. 
and we'll start seeing that uh, we should have some more shadows to give us a little more believable uh, natures to the uh, character right here. There, good shadows in with the clothes. We don't have this light bleed coming through the character's head. If I uh, turned uh, the character around a little bit, we would pick up this reflected light in the scene. Let's do one more with a different type of HDR light right here. Let's choose another one that's a little brighter maybe. Hmm. Teen bedroom? No, I don't think so. Let's go with pond and pond AO. Ambient occlusion is the AO on that. Come back to preview. Looks like we've got one light in the scene. Let's inspect this. Spotlight on the scene. Come down to properties. I do want ambient occlusion turned on. I do want shadows turned on because I want this to be a little more believable. And I'll leave those other uh, settings as they are right now. And if I turn it on to ray trace shadows, this will take a little longer to render, but it gives us more believable shadows. In another movie, I'd showed how the depth map shadows can make things at close range look like they're floating or not attached to the objects around them. That's one nice thing about working with the ray trace shadows is that uh, everything gets firmly grounded. With this setup right now, the lights being adjusted in the scene, when we come up and do a basic render here with Superfly, we'll see it kick into gear. And we'll get a very nice, very different look going on with our scene. So very believable reflected colors thanks to the image lights being used in the scene. We've adjusted the spotlight so that it is casting shadows. We don't have strange light glowing where it shouldn't be glowing. So that's a quick look into kind of determining how you want to work with the characters in your scene. If you do want to do close-ups, I would always go ahead and work with Superfly on that. But when you're doing layered images, for example, we've had a couple movies on working with G-buffers. If you want a background that renders more quickly, that you can layer in in the paint program of your choice. But bring in some nice close-up characters so that you can go ahead and get some realistic lighting and create some real believable scenery. This is a fantastic way to do it. And being able to make that determination ahead of time, going, I'm going to save time with this element of production. I'm going to go ahead and let the machine chew on it a little bit on this side and make it work that way. It's just uh, smart ways to handle the tool sets that you've got. So yeah, we've got this kind of a Caucasian skin which transmits light. And that's the other part about the subsurface scattering. As the light goes into the object and moves around based on the material settings, you'll see more functionality or more effect really with lighter skin characters than darker skin characters. You'll have to play with that a little bit. Personally, I love the darker skin characters because there's just a richness of the skin highlights and, ah well, that's something else. So here we are, we've worked with this. Uh, we're seeing some little seams. It's my job to point out where uh, maybe the models don't work quite too well and this is one e excellent example of that where you have to be careful about these close-up scenes and where these uh, little issues are with the texture maps and the geometry as well. So working with these objects, not a panacea to all the types of issues that come with CG human characters, but a nice way to work with the tool set. Have a lot of fun working with subsurface scattering. In